All right, here we go. Happy Tuesday, everybody. We survived the eclipse. I see all my body parts are here. I'm good. I'm not blind. We survived the eclipse. Uh, talk about a overrated uh, event. Not as overrated as last night's NCAA championship game. The OVE podcast, uh, Scott Torgerson from QFM 96, Sam Grooms. It's Ohio versus everyone where we talk about Ohio sports, Buckeyes, Browns, Bengals, Blue Jacks, Cavs, Guardians, Reds. Buckeye hoops, all the national stuff. Once you subscribe to the new page, we're approaching 2,000 subscribers. It's youtube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone. We do a cool sports memorabilia giveaway each month if you are a subscriber. So be sure to like whatever channel you are on. And remember the super chats, you can steer the conversation. Uh, we got, if we're on Meta, you could throw us some stars. We'll talk about whatever you want. If you're hurt at work or in an accident, let attorney Robert Sugar go to war for you at warforyou.com. National championship game last night. New rules when it comes to transfer portal with the NCAA. Caitlin Clark in Iowa and South Carolina getting 24 million viewers, and it means nothing, Sam. And then the team up north thinks they are tougher than Ohio State. We got a lot of stuff to go over today. So what what was the bigger flop the the eclipse or the uh, the the hysteria about the potential for uh, uh, you know bad weather was it a week ago? Yeah, probably the, the eclipse. Flop? Probably the eclipse. Am I the only one to think the eclipse was just about like so underwhelming? Well, I mean, it's, it's really un- easy. It was super underwhelming when we were sitting here on the podcast. No, but I had video. I had my wife and kids t- showing me videos, like live videos. So while we were doing the podcast, I was like watching the videos going, okay, it looks like a cloudy day out. Like, what the hell's going on here? This is not impressive at all. Yeah, I'll, Hey, man, if that's your thing, you know, I'll let you live. I do have a massive problem with meteorologists who can barely predict what the weather's going to be in two hours. You know, tell you you need to not go to work and businesses need to shut down and schools need to be closed the night before. Uh, th- there's a potential for severe weather. That that's where I draw the line. But no. Also, I uh, I put this in the show notes. This is strictly for me. Uh, I got to catch up with a friend from college today, so I want to show out a whoop, uh, throw out a whoop whoop. Hope you're doing well and uh, hope you're watching. It's not the guy I don't like, right? No. Okay. No, not a, not a guy. Okay. Oh, a chick. Nice. Cool thing. Cool thing at Belmont was like, you know, the soccer they had, you know, men's and women's soccer. They had uh, men and women basketball and they were all like tight. Well, obviously there wasn't a there was a softball team. There's no other baseball team and they didn't have a men's volleyball team. And our uh, seasons like were offset. So they were a fall sport. We were spring sport. So we would go in and, you know, be the the referees for games and stuff. So we, we got to be pretty good friends with a bunch of volleyballers and I got to. She just got recently got married. I was busting her chops about that. So uh, I just, you know, said hi. And I told her to watch the show. I'd, I'd show her. I, I'd throw her out a uh, a little shout out. Cool. All right, man. Yeah. Uh, today's poll question, by the way, what's the most iconic experience sound in sports or entertainment? For me, it's, it's, and we'll get to it in the second segment. They, they're not special anymore because they're overused. They're overdone. Um, you know, look at last year with the Mets and that, Damn, uh, what was it Timmy Tequila or whatever the hell he was? Timmy, Tr- uh, Tommy Trumpet, Tommy Trumpet, that stupid idiot. And then, so they bring out Tommy Trumpet. If you're not familiar with the story, Tommy Trumpet comes out and does it live at uh, the new Shea. And then the pitcher got hurt the very first game. So, Timmy roll- Trumpet, sorry. Yeah, they were close. Out, they roll out Timmy Trumpet, and then the reliever gets hurt when Timmy Trumpet shows up live. Talk about a wow, 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 sad trumpet sound. <laughs> sad trumpet, yeah. Sad trombone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's just to me, it's, it's, I have one. I think it's overused. There's nothing anymore that makes, you know, I'm sure the Steeler fans will say when they hear Renegade at a Steeler game or, you know, uh, big noises when it comes third down. But if you have an iconic noise that uh, you, when it, when you hear it during a sporting event, it kind of makes your, you know, hair on your arms. Uh, you know, kind of rise up. Let us know about it. That'll be. In the I, I, I kind of blew blew my wad yesterday, so I'll I'll save it. And you know, if you were watching yesterday, you probably know where I'm going to go with this. And it kind of was what was spawned this uh, spawned this question. But I've got a couple others that I do want to throw out there that are that are pretty, I think, iconic and still to this day, even if they are 
not being used still if you go back and watch some tapes and stuff or some 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 uh video still kind of gives you a little bit of a chill so let that one digest a little bit was the most iconic experience song or sound in sports or entertainment let's jump right into it michigan's trying to stick their chest out a little bit uh so what i want to ask you because they think so uh is michigan's quote toughness why they've won the last three years yeah, and, they, and they're, what they're doing is they are throwing out there right now, obviously they're in spring ball as well, and they are talking about how they are working harder this year. Uh, they've never worked this hard. They are tougher than ever before. We're not talking about Ohio State here, but they think that their advantage they have over Ohio State is they're tougher. They're tougher than everyone in the Big Ten. They're built on toughness. Now, I will say this. Um I do kind of, I think there is kind of something there. Now, if you go back to the game, now you go back to the game, Sam, the last two years, and it's hard for me to get out of my mind the assist of Connor Stallions. But when you're talking about the physicality at the line of scrimmage two years ago in 2021, you watch that game and you say, yeah, Michigan dominated the trenches in that game. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Are they a tougher team in general? I don't know. I mean, last year's game went down to, what, just a couple plays, mm -hmm. right? It went down to, and that's what football yeah. sometimes is. On, you can, on that last drive, Ohio State's offensive line was pushing your ass around. Yeah, um, but our right side of our offensive line wasn't good. So, or was it the left side where he got sacked? Last that was year? the right side. So my, right my side. question is this, is what, what, how do we, how do you, I'll ask you and then I'll ask the chat. How do you judge toughness? Is it the ability to run the ball? Is it dominating line of scrimmage? Is it playing with a broken leg? Like what, what is toughness? Because I think the problem we have in, in, you know, whether it's the modern day media or just the, the, the sports fan is we assume that just because you can run the ball better than the opposing teams somehow means you're tougher. And I, and I've always, what what is what bothered me about Urban Meyer is he always wanted to have balance, right? He wanted to run 25 run plays, 25 pass plays, you know, run for 300, pass for 300. What I would contend is you you need to do what you are best at and you need to attack the weaknesses of the opposition, whether that's on offense or defense. So if that means you are a better passing team and your opposition's uh, DBs and secondary is, is not as good, then you throw the ball. If uh, you have an dominant offensive line, uh, the opposition's linebackers and, you know, maybe the the, the left uh, defensive tackle and left defensive end aren't that good, then guess what? You're running towards the left. So I, I always think that people conflate toughness with the ability to run the football. Secondly, I think people largely forget, go back and watch the 2022 game in the shoe. High State dominated that first half. With the exception of, I think, they got stopped, were forced to kick three field goals, one of which they missed, and then they had um, one DB fall down on his ass, one DB miss a tackle. So that's 21 points potentially missed out by Ohio State and 14 give it up. Ohio State dominated Michigan in that first half, and then all of a sudden they start rip, Michigan starts ripping big, big plays. I think they had 350 yards on seven plays. Call me a little skeptical. You know, at the time, maybe we thought it was adjustments made by Michigan or that that toughness or the will to win. I think there. I think we now know maybe there was a little bit more at play than just toughness. Well, I mean, it's physicality. It's winning in the trenches. It's opening holes, uh, having your will, pushing the other person over. I, I think it's it, – here's the thing. When you build your team and you're not as talented as the other guys, clearly Michigan doesn't have the talent that Ohio State has. It's just a different brand of football when you have five-star guys. Michigan can't match our wide receivers. Michigan can't, you know, defensively they could because they were physical in the trenches up front. They were really physical. To say Michigan's a more physical team than Ohio State, sure, they might have us. Uh, Ohio State, though, is a more talented team than Michigan. Uh, you look at coaching. I think Ohio State made the necessary changes this year to be a better coach team. But, Sam, Michigan has to play like that. Michigan has to be tougher in the trenches. They have to play a more physical style of football. You could see – I'll use an example here for if there's any high school fans out there, high school football fans. My kid plays football for Canal Winchester, super small school. They are not big. They don't have four-star guys. They have one offensive lineman who's going to Cornell because he's super smart. Then you look at Westerville South. 
Go look at like Michigan State's roster. They have like three or four kids who go to go to Westerville South. All Michigan uh, Westerville South probably has about eight to ten guys who are playing Division One and Division Two football each year. Uh, look what Canal did to Westerville South. Beat them pretty decisively. Then Stanley Jackson started running his big fat mouth about Westerville North kicking the crap out of Canal. Uh, Canal. Uh, his Stanley Jackson's kid turned the ball over five times. Canal kicked the crap out of him. So what I'm saying is Canal is not even close on a talent level with either one of those two teams. Those two teams have Division I football athletes coming this fall all over the place. But Canal had the best season ever, lost one game, the final game of the season, and they're all farm kids who are just tough as hell. So you can win football games on toughness, and that's kind of how Michigan was. Michigan, Sam, is three-star players. No, they cannot compete with Ohio State, so they better be tougher in the trenches to win games. Correct? That's how they have to build their team. Yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't hear anybody, even even with Ohio State, bragging about how much tougher Ohio State was than Michigan the previous twenty years, right? Before the last three, right? Yeah. No, nobody at Ohio State, to, to my knowledge, was going around saying Ohio State was tougher and, and practices are harder than the game. That's why. That's why we're better. Ohio State just knew our coaching staff was better. And our players were better. The play, I'm sorry, I, I hate it when people do that. Ohio State's coaches were better and Ohio State's players were better. But now all of a sudden, these assholes want to run out pumping their chest up because they played to their strength. And all of a sudden, now they're tougher and they want it more than Ohio State. Shut the hell up. Like, that's that's absolute bullshit. Like, you were this close and, and I'm not I'm not in the game of of you know the 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 moral victories like the the Georgia game not a you know not a moral victory to me being this close to beating Michigan last year moral victory that was a tough tight tightly played game last year don't don't run around acting like Michigan in that game last year was that much tougher than a high state because you weren't you almost you you were a play you you were a right tackle or a right guard away from losing that game to Kyle freaking McCord so spare me the bullshit not to mention the fact that again, we have all the circumstantial evidence around. Man, Michigan was kind of struggling with Harbaugh 67 and 24 for the previous five years until all of a sudden they flipped the switch. No, it's not because you were that much tougher than everybody else, or because you're you all of us all of a sudden found out how to get it done. It's because you cheated. You benefited from that the past three years. Now we're gonna see how fucking tough you are coming up. Sorry, excuse the language. I'm I'm so sick of Michigan running around though. pumping they their chest out. They, they, Screw they you. Won. We're gonna see how freaking tough you are this year. Yeah, but for three straight years, they get bragging rights. They won. Yeah, so, and but, you know what? Kudos, but don't why what's, they what's the line? Don't don't, don't it, piss on my face and tell if, me it's raining. But if if Ohio State lost for you know one three times or one three times out of 20 years, and Ohio State won three times in a row, Ohio State would be doing the same damn thing, though, and bragging mm -hmm. about when that's all they have, Sam. Look, have you been there? Hey, yeah, the, the difference look, between a high I mean, state fan, the difference between a high state fan and Michigan fan right now is when Ohio State was beating that ass like a drum for 20 years. Michigan fans run around saying it's okay. Our real rivals, Michigan State or Penn State. You know, we're a basketball school, not a football school. High state fans get pissed off and they they're hoping that their team can turn it around instead of making excuses. I, I think Michigan, like to not like lose my mind like you are. I think Michigan has to beat the crap out of each other in spring ball. I think they have to do this because they don't have talent. So I think they're just going to try to bring a tougher type. That's going to be, you know, the mantra this year for Michigan football is we're going to be built on toughness because they're not going to beat people with skill. They're not going to have a advantage from the skill positions, right? They're not going to have that quarterback. They're not going to have the running game. They're not going to have the defense. A lot of people graduated on that team. So Sharon Moore's thought of, okay, how do I win with these guys is probably, all right, I'm going to work these guys like they haven't been worked in the last 20 years. So that's why they're running about this, talking about this is the hardest camp, because I think they have to have that camp. I think it's just a different philosophy from this team of how do we win football games? Well, we got to beat the crap out of these guys because we're really not talented this year. Yeah, tell me how tough you are when you go eight and four. Uh, I want to hit the super chat, Pat. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for the five. Toughness equals physicality, and that team up north has won the battle three times in a row. It's close, but that team up north had the edge, and absolutely. But let's not act like, especially in the last two years, that there's a, this giant chasm of, or disparity in how tough the players are. No, but Just, they won, though. 
They, and they, that's fine. They, I'm not, but, but you won. Like, you won the game. Okay. Does ha, have there not been games in the past where you know when I'm talking about High State versus Michigan where the less tough team won? There, I mean, so these guys are just running around and bragging like they're they're so much better. Their system's better than everybody else. We're going to see how good your system is when you don't have that cheat sheet anymore. There is a label on Ohio State's program about toughness. There is. That's why 96-year-old, I eat applesauce for dinner at 3 o'clock, Lou Holtz was mocking Ohio State when it was Common Manitorg on 97.1. Listen, we criticize the Buckeyes for not being tough. It's when you recruit guys, Sam, they're not recruiting toughness. They're recruiting five-star skills. The job of the coaching staff is when they get these five-star guys in is to get them to play differently with toughness because, you know, if you have a defensive tackle, Sam, and he's a five-star defensive tackle, and I'm not picking on any, and I actually thought the defensive tackles were were strong. So let me use a different position, right? I'll use defensive end, and I can use an example. JTT and Jack Sawyer came in, and I'm not saying they're soft, but they weren't getting to the quarterback. Jack Sawyer did the final game of the season, but these guys weren't physically just dominating from edge rushers getting to the quarterback over and over and over, but they were brought in to do that. The coach's responsibility is when they get these five stars in is mold these guys to they went to the way they want them. Are you athletic? Are you tough? Uh, you know, are we looking for speed? Ohio State has just changed its philosophy from Tress to Urban Meyer. They just went through a change. Uh, Urban's team, or uh, Tress's team's three-star grunt guy. Yeah, they had super athletes like Terrell Pryor and, and Troy Smith and different guys like that. But Beanie Wells was a big guy. Uh, Cardell Jones was a big guy. Uh, it's just Ohio State recruits differently now where it's a combination of toughness and speed. But the But it's true. The Bucca, whether we like it or not, there is a label on this football team about getting punched in the face and not being able to punch back. That's the label. Don't get mad at the messenger, but that is kind of the scouting report of this football team the last half dozen years, dozen years. Mm, right? I, I, I mean, whether you disagree with it or not, I mean, you got senile Lou Holt saying it, different radio people say it. I mean, the label's out there for a reason, folks. That's why Ryan Day got so pissed off after the Notre Dame game because Ryan Day was saying, see, we're not a soft team. So eat it, old man. Take out yeah. your dentures and suck it. Yeah, I, I just don't – I, I don't I, – I understand why Michigan fan wants to brag about this. And, again, no, you weren't bragging when when you were about to run Harbaugh off the, off the plantation. Dude was about to be gone. Like, let's not, let's not get it twisted. And all of a sudden – it changes because you're somehow tougher than everybody and he's hired the right coaches and we're developing guys when in reality, maybe you did something you shouldn't have been doing at all, but you know, you're, you're still that much tougher than everybody. I don't buy it. I really don't buy it. I buy this. It's, it's, it's a tough team this year. I buy High it. State Michigan is a, is a always a tough, hard nosed, just beat the crap out of the guy across from you game. Just because you've won three doesn't necessarily mean you're that much tougher than your opposition. They got a national title. I've got two in my lifetime with a high state. Yeah. Like, just spare me. You, you cheated. Know, but, you but, benefited but from it. All right now. We have to. You, we have you to cheated and benefited from it. You're not that much tougher than everybody else. Although I will say, I'll give you credit. Your defense was nasty this year and you were able to run the football. Well, that's but the again, only way they can win this year is they have to get in and, you know, d get in the trenches, as they would say, and have to be physical in the trenches. That's the only way this team's going to win. They don't have the type of playmakers they had last year to put a lot of points on the board. Now, I, I would have to take a look at their schedule, but I, I would assume they have four losses this year, right? It could go down quick. South. It could go south quick. Yeah. Um, you before get you give me, give, give me a stroke. I don't, know why you're, I don't know why you're getting so upset about this. Let's hit Patrick real quick. He says, under day, it's safe to say that teams aren't traditional OSU tough that we expect. I agree 100%, Patrick. Sam, you shouldn't be losing your mind over this. Uh, I, it's, 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 not about, it's not about it's Ohio State as hard. much. It's not about Ohio State as much as it's about Michigan fan thinking they're something they're not. That's all. But they're national champions. But it's built on a, the, the whole program the last three years was built on a house of cards. But not that's, to them. That's the issue. 
Well, they're, they're an idiot, but they're that's well, what I'm saying. Know, they're idiots. They're like they, we know they're low IQ, but their whole point is, well, when, after we got caught, we still beat Ohio State, Michigan, or Alabama, and Washington. Okay, well, let's see, let's see. But that's the thing, though. You're still they were still benefiting from the previous two and a half years. Yes. Like, and they and they still have not been punished for that. That's like I understand maybe the, the second half of the of the uh, season last year that maybe. Just maybe you you didn't know what the team was running at you. You didn't have game film that might have been stolen from servers. I don't know. But you were still benefiting from it and never been punished for it. That's can my I, issue. Can I give you a, like a better way to channel your anger? Is yeah, this, is, this is how, Well, this is how desperate this program has become. Is You're right. They did cheat to win, and they know it. They know without cheating, they wouldn't be where they're at, Sam. And so they need to throw this crap out there to keep their minds in a better place that they still are the national champs. We are tough. This is the toughest camp we ever have. It's all theater of the mind for them because they know deep down they cheated for one. Two, they got to work their ass off in training camp because look what Ohio State did. And your booger-eating coach didn't even want to be there. He won a national title, and the booger-eater would take any job in the NFL. You go look back. Two years ago with Minnesota, he wanted to go to Denver a couple years ago. He wanted to go to Atlanta this year. He was going to go anywhere he wanted because he knew they were cheating, Sam. He knew they were going to get caught, and he knows Michigan will not be able to repeat this for another 50 years until they think of a new cheating scandal. So I don't mind that Michigan's doing this. I th- To me, it reeks of desperation of a program that they have to throw this stuff out that we're the toughest team in the Big Ten. No one's working tougher in spring tra- practice than we are. We re- This is the toughest we've been in 20 years. We've never been tougher. To me, that reeks with desperation when you're throwing that crap out in spring game. That's all. I just think they reek in desperation, and I feel sorry for the little guy. It's all right, little buddy. Go to your room just, and have like a popsicle. It's okay. Because just enjoy it. Here now, we're going to stay up late and watch TV. You go in the bedroom and cry yourself to sleep because yeah, you're just, not real. Yeah, just, just enjoy it, gentlemen, while you can. I mean, reality is going to set back in very soon. See, I just I just think re- they, they know they have to come up with these false narratives to keep themselves like relevant, to keep believing. You know what I mean? They're kind of – who is the guy in the program, Latimer, where he's he's – doing roids and he's in the mirror and he's got black eye makeup and he's lifting weights talking about that's Michigan. Michigan's got to talk to themselves in the mirror about how great they are because really when they leave the mirror, they look at themselves and they're really pathetic. So that's how I look at it. I can't get worked up like you can Sam because I know what it really is. I know it's all false because they're trying to pump themselves up because of the off season. Their coach didn't want to be there. Coach is leaving. Uh, low IQ football. Mike Hart's leaving. They're trying to get. They're taking our worst coach, thinking it's a W. That's like their big win in the off season. Sam, don't worry. Let them say whatever they want. We know the truth. There, did I help you out a little bit there? You know, I feel so much better now, man. I'm so zen. Woo saw. You do. Uh, we got a national championship game. The NCAA making changes to the transfer portal. I don't know if it's good or not, and why. And I, you know, I've been a big fan of Caitlin Clark and watching women's basketball. But why 24 million viewers in the championship game means diddly squat. And we'll let you know next on the OVE podcast. We go to war for you. At Sugar Schnarr Trial Attorneys, we don't back down. Accident? Call us today at 877 war for you or visit warforyou.com for a free consultation. Know your rights because results matter. That's 877 war for you. 877 war for you or visit warforyou.com. War for you. Warforyou.com. Thinking of buying or selling a home? Give Lauren Torgerson a call with Next Home Experience. Lauren has been servicing the Columbus metropolitan area for 10 years. So whether you're a first-time home buyer, considering building, want to upsize or downsize, Lauren can help you with all your real estate needs. Get a free market analysis for your area and get started working on making tomorrow's dreams happen today. Call or text Lauren at 614-296-3952. 614-296-3952 or email at torgersonlauren at gmail.com. OVE Podcast, the Tor, Sam Groom, 
Scott Torgerson, QFM 96, Sam Groom every day, Monday through Friday, right here on uh, the Menace to Sports YouTube channel. All your streaming services, whether it's Apple or Amazon or Spotify. The new YouTube channel wants you to subscribe, get involved in our monthly sports memorabilia giveaway. All you got to do is hit subscribe on the new channel, youtube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone. If you're watching on Meta, remember the stars, man. We Let us live, man. We're basically doing this for free, so give us some love, especially on the Super Chat. We got jobs. We got kids. Got right? Let us live. Uh, by the way, today's poll question, what's the most iconic experience, song, sound, in sports, or entertainment, Sam? I want to I hit this. Uh, Pat trying to talk me off the ledge. He goes, Sam, it's their lack of class, and it gets me too. It's, again, the class, yeah, you could say that. It's the fact that you don't – it's you're oblivious to what you actually are. You think you're something you're not. That's my problem. I'm just trying to be the dose of reality for you. That's all. I'm trying to help you, Michigan fan. Oh, man. Well, you know what it was? I feel it, better now, by the way. You know what it is, though? It is – and I got to do the show. I try to do it, and I just ended up doing the show last week when I was on vacation. But I want to really do a show on Tatgate. Because I was the one who broke the story. I didn't do it on purpose. I was forced to break the story because uh, ESPN was going to break the story. But they were going to, ESPN was going to make it a drug trafficking involving OSU story. And that's not what it was. So I had to break the story to get the narrative off ESPN's narrative. And it was just how Ohio State, it's a, it's a good kind of lesson of how the Ohio State media covers the story and how the soft Michigan media covers the story. Because if there's a scandal at Ohio State, if there was a Connor Stallions at Ohio State, do you really think that the Columbus media, maybe some, would take the softball approach and ignore it? Or do you think people would dig in and find the story? The Michigan oh, I, media is soft, they're low IQ, and they can't even call themselves journalists. It's their embarrassment. Their sports radio is embarrassment. They do nothing. So they let a let a team cheat for two and a half years. And instead of doing something about it, they just pretend it didn't happen or it wasn't that big of a deal. Well, think of how hypersensitive the, the compliance department is at Ohio State. I mean, they'd probably find something and self-report something like this. Yeah. It wouldn't it's, even it's, get to this point. It's not, the same. Ohio State. It's not the same. And, and um, if it didn't happen at Ohio State, uh, two things. Ryan Day would be fired, and if Ryan Day was looking for another job, Ohio State, one, the alumni, the fans, and the administration wouldn't be acting like bitches going, Jim Harbaugh, please come back. Please come back to us. Here's what. Here's one thing that Ohio State can never say they are. Bitches like Michigan, because whether you agree or not, Michigan fan, you know it, and it's factual. This is not made up. You sat there while your boyfriend Harbaugh was cheating on you with other women, just waiting for him to come back. Maybe he'll come home. It's 2 a.m. Maybe he'll come back to us. You're pathetic. Have more pride in your program. You just won a national title, and you let your coach like go everywhere, and you're just, please come back to us. No, move on and have some nuts and have some respect for yourself and tell Jim, hey, screw you. We're hiring someone else. That's why Michigan will never be it's, at Ohio State's it, level because because of that right there. They are bitches. And it's not just that he walked out the door. He took half your coaching staff with him. He did. And then the, all, the, all the Michigan fans did is sit back and please come back the Dave Portnoy's. Please come back. Please come back to us. No, you cheated. You cheated to win. You're going to bury the program. Get the hell out. Go to go to L.A. Go to Sanford or go to Atlanta. We're not going to put up with that, but they do. Because that's the type of program they are, Sam. They're a once-in-a-lifetime winner, and they won't win in our lifetime. Everybody watching this and listening right now, Michigan will never win a championship in your lifetime, probably never live in your win in your kid's lifetime. And they sit back and they wait for little Jimmy, who they wanted to fire three weeks ago, to come back to them because Jim's at the bar with a prettier chick and you're the fat girl eating s'mores. <laughs> I just had a visual picture there, and it's not not pretty. Uh, what is the most iconic experience, song, sound, you know, whatever you want to throw in there? Oh, we're tough. In we're sports, tough. tough this week, Sam. We're tougher. We're tough. In sports or entertainment, where are you going with this? Uh, probably because I'm a Vikings fan. They have the horn. Skull. Like the skull horn. The problem with it is 
and I hate to be like the old guy, get off my lawn, is they use it too much. If you're going to have a special iconic song, sound, whatever it is, if you get a third and one on your own 32, you don't blow the damn horn. When you score a touchdown, you blow the horn. When you get a over the 30 yard pass, a reception, you blow the horn. You don't blow it on a third and one. That's the problem I have with the skull horn at the Vikings game is they blow it. It's like first and 10 and they get a six yard run and then they blow it. I'm going, what the hell? That's not special. So like I'm, the, I'm, the I'm Penn a, State Nittany line roar. Yeah, I'm going to same thing. Great, great point, Sam. That roar is like, is it special? I, I think a sound like you're, you're I don't know, I'll let you do yours. I won't steal your thunder. But yours is great because when it happens, it happens once. It doesn't happen 10 times. It's yeah, give times. give me I, – I, I talked about it yesterday in, in as an homage to night two of WrestleMania. It's the it's the, the bell and the lights going out for The Undertaker. Like, it, it's just – it's not overused, except yeah. for maybe, you know, at WrestleMania's. But the guy's an icon. He's probably going to be – and keep in mind, this is I'm not, a, I'm not the wrestling fan that Torg is. No, you're I not. I just think it's unreal and so cool anytime – unexpected unexpectedly that happens it's iconic it's the best it's not overused it's perfect it's just right um you know my number two would probably be enter sandman and i understand it was for mariana rivera but that song the the lead into that song is just so badass it's yeah. timeless like it's never gonna go away no i i agree uh breaking news but we talked about this story yesterday john calipari just came out confirmed i am leaving kentucky for arkansas it, old story just He just spoke for the first time and says, yes, I am leaving Kentucky, so we know it. The chicken money, yes, there are stories out there that he was interested in Ohio State. I think it's good for both parties with Kentucky and John Calipari. Boy, I really wish we would have uh, at least entertained it more than what we did. You, you know who I, else I is don't even like, I don't even like John Calipari. He's one of my least likable people, but he cheats better than like anybody. You know who else is an Arkansas grad that's got big money that I think might have been involved in this? Jerry that nobody's talking about? Jerry Jones. So that, that's, you know. <laughs> and, and you know what this proves to me, Sam? This proves to me the, the get off. This is what I'm get off the lawn guy about, right? And it really pisses me off. Is other teams in the Big Ten not doing their part? The Minnesota, the Purdue's, the Indiana's, where they make the same money as Ohio State, but they don't do their job to make the conference better. Because you can go to the SEC. And what does Ole Miss do? Well, they try to hire their, they were a dog crap team, right? They have made moves. Go look at their coaching moves. They have tried to hire top coaches, Lane Kiffin, Mike Leach at Mississippi State. There are teams in the SEC that go out and spend money. Arkansas is, and I know Nolan Richardson in Arkansas did have at one point a great legacy in college hoops. Okay. I, I know that. But this is a case with Arkansas where they went out, show me the money and get a guy. Money buys coaching. Money buys coaching staff. If you're Purdue, who many years ago under Joe Tiller were pretty decent. If you're Purdue, let's say you're Indiana, Sam, and you were Indiana, and let's say you gave Lane Kiffin $10 million. You're telling me Lane Kiffin, and they have the money. You can't tell me Indiana doesn't have the money. Are you telling me Lane Kiffin's not going to think about going to Indiana for $10 I saw, million? Dollars? I saw a report saying Cal Parry had been in negotiations with Arkansas since the end of February. Yes. And there's a report that he was in the Ohio State job. But right. Sam, would that's you agree? Cr that's if, crazy. Like, if, if, look at Mel Tucker, nine million dollars. You're telling me if Minnesota ever got rid of row the boat guy, and I don't know why Minnesota isn't better in the transfer portal and NIL with Hormel and 3M and Target Corporation. It's in Minneapolis. I think the school needs to do a way better job or their NIL needs to do a better job of attracting top athletes. You're right in downtown Minneapolis, a great campus. But are you telling me, Sam, if Minnesota wanted to get invested in the football program, that they couldn't get a top guy and spend $12 million a year to get a top coach? C coaches will leave their programs if you pay them enough money. Ted DiBiase said every man has its price, and he does. Sam, you're a, if there's a price for you to leave Columbus, there's a price for everybody to leave their job. Absolutely. I, I, again, I just I got an offer to Detroit and I was going to leave Columbus because they paid me a crap load of money. And my I, I just I had a good I, I don't too. Calipari. I don't again, I we we differ. We disagree a little bit regarding Ohio State and, and that appeal to Calipari. I don't 
I I wouldn't want him anywhere near the program. It's not about the money that you have to spend, you know, spend for a salary. It's it's the buyout. It's the 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 NIL money. And and what are you? What kind of results are you getting for that? I mean, the guys won. Guys had supreme talent. He's put a lot of guys in the league, but he's won one national title. Like, I want Ohio State to win a championship. Like they haven't won one since '68. Is that right? Who's got a better chance to win a title? Jake Diebler in Ohio State or John Calipari? And State? you know what, man? I don't John know. I, re- I legitimately don't know. I, I do, because I I've never yeah, seen I've never seen Diebler be a head coach for a prolonged period of time, which is a problem in itself. Don't get me wrong, but I just think. And keep in mind too, it's like, like I just brought up, he was in conversations trying to get out of his contract at UK since February. Like, if you if if he mails it in there, do you don't think he's going to potentially, it's going to bite you in the ass at Ohio State? Like, had some good years there. I just, I, I just, I Calipari's a dirt ball. He makes your team relevant right away. Yeah, Ohio that that, that is true. Relevant. That's Ohio absolutely true. They're not a relevant program. Sorry, and I'm I'm a big Jake Diebler defender. If you watch the podcast, I have been pure. Uh, Pure team, Jake Diebler. In this yeah. case, though, I gotta like kick the tires on John Calipari, don't you? Just I mean, are so we? Are, do, do we know that the Ohio State didn't? Uh, no, there. It, well, it's reported that they that Calipari was interested in Ohio State. I don't know. Well, then know. maybe they talked, and Ohio State was like, "Yeah, we're not, we're not interested." Yeah, that could. I mean, been we, I guess we don't. They, we don't know what we don't know, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it, I would. I, so to, to your point, I would say it would be. It would be irresponsible for Bjork. Or G- and or Gene Smith not to have the conversation, and not to at least pick up the phone and call him if that was if that is true. Yeah. So um, speaking of basketball, we had last night uh, the lock of the century: UConn beats Purdue oh, so by fifteen. Easy there. Uh, UConn. Um, that's two in a row. Uh, if they win next year. That's a three peat. Pat Riley, don't sue us. Uh, UConn now has more titles. I, I heard this and I kind of jaw hit the floor. UConn now has more titles than Duke, Kansas, and Indiana, and is tied with North Carolina. Wow. Pretty impressive, National isn't titles. it? Absolutely. Really impressive. Mm-hmm. Just a really impressive job. It's, I think, two in a row in this day and age of college basketball. Yeah, it's a mini dynasty. I mean, it might be the best you can get. It hasn't happened. Uh, it doesn't happen all that often. Uh, they're going to lose guys to the NBA. Uh, they're going to lose guys graduating out. What if in in Ohio sports and Sam, can you type this real quick in the chat? In Ohio sports, what's the closest thing we've had to a dynasty in Ohio sports? Would it be LeBron in the Cavs? What did they go to three straight NBA finals? Right, they won one and they lost two. Would that be kind of the? But is that considered a dynasty though? Just uh, getting to the NBA I, finals three to three years in a row. I would say pre Super Bowl Cleveland Browns. What they won six championships. Uh, Sam, and before Super Bowl, you that doesn't count in football. But don't, you, you don't asked. I know, but don't be that guy. Don't count pre Super Bowl. That, but that's how pathetic sport. I, I that's, it's, it's, I'm not hanging on to the Browns in that. I'm saying that's the only thing we got, and that's pathetic. I mean, the Reds, the 75, 76 Reds, is that better? There you go. Big Red Machine might be. That's the 70, last, that's I'll the last the, dynasty in Ohio sports, right? I'll there, put right the there. 76 Reds up against any Major League Baseball team ever formed. That's including the 22, 26 Yankees, whatever one was murderer's row. I'm taking the Reds in that one. Hey, that's legit. I think you might be right with the Reds. The Reds might be the last dynasty in Ohio sports. <laughs> and, and boy, 50 could, years ago. <laughs> you could have a legit conversation that the urban years, we were pretty damn close, man. Pretty damn close. If you throw one more championship in there or another appearance in there, like one more championship and another appearance, you kind of got it, but it's it's such a tough sport. You know, four teams get in. And, well, and, and, and Urban, big, what and I will say about Urban. And, and we and couldn't go in 2012. Tip tip of the hat to Urban. We would have smacked Notre Dame that year. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Urban completely changed the dynamic of Ohio State and what our expectations are for that team year to year. Like Trestle, you know, picked up the baton from Cooper, improved the program, took the took the program up a level. But we never really expected Trestle's teams to be in it to win the Natty every year. That changed when Urban walked in. He just wanted to beat Michigan every year. Really, it was so different with Trestle. Beat, yeah, beat Michigan, win the Big Ten. That was yep. you know what we wanted. Yep. You know, as far as the expectations, and then Urban walked in the door, and that all changed. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if you're watching. 
hit like button right now. Give us a little like. Let's get the algorithms going a little bit. Let's get more people out there watching the show. Spread the word. Subscribe to the new channel, youtube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone. Who out of the landscape right now in sports, the pros, college, outside of Ohio State football? Because I think there could be like dynasty there starting this year. And if they could con- kind of continue what they have, I mean, the outlook, obviously, they're head and shoulders above everyone else. What would be the next most likely team to be closest in that area? I could tell you the farthest team away is Blue Jacket Hockey. Blue Jacket Hockey, they are three years away from being even 500. And then when you catch me in three years, I'll say they're three more years from being 500. They are the, <laughs> the worst franchise in all of sports, and they have for the last 20 years. They are god awful. Um, but who so of, is, your question is of the Ohio franchises, who's closest to it? To being a I, I tell you what, could uh you could have it here, Sam. Let me just throw this out there. If the Bengals get to the Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl this year, okay, they go to the Super Bowl, they lose. Joe Burrow's out for the, the majority of the season, they don't go. The following year, they win the Super Bowl. That's kind of in the conversation of a mini dynasty if they continue to be top of their game for the next five years, maybe give you a Super Bowl win in there, maybe a Super Bowl appearance. I mean, I think the Bengals, out of all the pro sports teams, and obviously we're talking Ohio State basketball in there. Are we including the crew? Okay, well, the crew's there. there. I mean, I think they're the hands-down winner. However, let's just – the table them, the set them aside. Football. We give we we're giving the crew some flowers. Here you go. Here's your kudos. Well, okay, now win. step they aside. Ca- they kind of have one now, don't they? Yeah, I mean, they, what have they won three? They won two and five. So yeah. Um, I mean, I think in order to be dynastic, you actually have to win it. You know, I understand the the Bengals have had more success than the Browns. Man, that's a tough one. Like, I think the Reds could be really good this year. They've had the a little bit of an injury bug hit him at the beginning of the year, and then a, a whoopsie, I shouldn't have put that in my body at the beginning of the year. Um, oh, it's women's hockey we had in. That yeah, year. they're good. They're yeah. real good. Yeah, they um, they've won. They've been to three straight and won two or three, so that's a good one. Um, you know, Mark, Mark's right on the chat where he says, I don't see the Bengals organization being able to sustain a winning – winning enough to be a dynasty you're absolutely right mark it's, it's how they won their it's how they how they run their friends it's not that they can't be but you're right because of how they run things see what i'm saying the difference there it's not that they don't have the talent it's not that they don't draft well it's how they run their organization until mike brown dies and you and, and i don't mean this in a negative way i mean everybody dies that's just a fact of life when Mike Brown dies, though, your hope would be, hey, maybe his daughter runs the organization different than the dad. Well, and I would also say the 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 odds are kind of against them. From the NFL's perspective, that's probably the hardest league to establish and build a dynasty. Because it's literally yeah. designed to make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah. There's some anomalies, but, but as look, far as the four major pro, uh, pro leagues in the United States, like that's got to be the hardest one to do it in. You think so? Yeah. I think baseball is. I don't. You just just have the most money. Like, I know. That's why only like. I think baseball is the easiest. No, but there's only five teams that every year are in it. I'm talking about Ohio teams, the hardest to win. Oh, yeah, yeah. So okay. I was, I was just talking about the leagues okay, as a because whole. Because the Reds and Guardians can't compete. Yeah, yeah. Well, they don't have the payrolls. They don't have the. Yeah, yeah you're right. I, yeah, I see what you're saying. In that yeah, regard, yes. It's a lot easier for the Bengals to win it because they already have that established piece in Joe Burrow. What about the. I mean, I, I don't know jack shit about the NBA, but what about the Cavs? Yeah, I think the Cavaliers, if I'm running the Cavaliers, and we're going to get George Reese on for the playoffs, and we're going to do some uh, on this channel, we're going to do some NBA talk. Um, I think with the, with the what the Cavaliers are missing, and I'll kind of compare it to what Mi- the Minnesota Timberwolves did. I believe they're tied for number one in the West. Minnesota had Carl Anthony Towns. They had Anthony Edwards. And just like the Cavaliers, they traded all these picks, and they grabbed the other star from the Utah Jazz, Rudy Gobert. Now, personally, I would have gotten Donovan Mitchell – but Minnesota wanted to, to be able to stop Memphis and the way Memphis just tore them up in the playoffs. So they needed to combat the pick and roll and what Memphis was doing from an offensive standpoint. What the Cavaliers probably should do, Sam, at the end of this season is say, okay, we have the pieces. We don't want Donovan Mitchell to go. Let's take all our other assets, meaning the remaining first round picks. And I think the Cavaliers need one more superstar. And if the Cavaliers get that superstar, they've, they, man, they were so close. They've lost, you know, 
you know, seven out of 10 recently, and it's really dropped them in there. And then Boston's crushing it. But I still think Cleveland either wait, plays the waiting game, but then you're worried about Donovan Mitchell leaving. And the Knicks is the big rumor. Everybody wants to play for the Knicks, I guess. Um, or kind of go all in and just trade everything for the future and get another superstar. That's what I would do if I was Cleveland. Because I, I do think they're close, but I worry about Donovan Mitchell not being here if they wait too long and not become aggressive. Yeah, I I, I threw them in there because it looks like they're kind of going in the right direction. But again, I'm not a big NBA fan, so I'm not going to act like I know the ins and outs of it either. You want to hit a break and then come back and hit the uh, uh, hit this portal update? Yeah, let's do the portal. And we can, we can do four segments today. By the way, got a new uh, subscri- subscriber, Robert, my guy. Thank you so much. YouTube member, let's give him one more because I just hit it by accident. So he gets some extra love. We take a quick break. The NCAA making rulings, uh, new changes to the transfer portal. And we'll talk about it next on the OVE podcast. It's Torb for Custom Air. I've been saying it for years. No one beats Custom Air's service and knowledge. I know when I have anything going on with my heating and cooling, they are the go-to guys. In fact, they have taken care of every home of mine. Custom Air doesn't take shortcuts. They get the job done right the first time. It's great to do business with a company that's trustworthy and honest. That's just a few reasons why I go to Custom Air. Looking for a great company that you could trust? Call Custom Air. Custom solutions, custom comfort, Custom Air. Visit them on the web at customairco.com. Hazmat Ohio is a firefighter-owned and operated all-hazards training company specializing in custom safety training for your company's needs. They offer corporate CPR, AED first aid, confined space rescue standby, spill and emergency response, and they can train firefighters, industry safety teams, and employers. Call 740-507-8802. That's 740-507-8802. All right. Remember, our sponsors, fantastic. Love Custom Air. I worked for Custom Air over 10 years, man. They have worked at my lake house, worked at my Westerville house, worked here. I had to get on my in-laws who just moved here. Uh, they use someone else. I go, dude, you use Custom Air. They get the job done right the first time. They use someone else. The guy's been at your house five times. Listen to your son-in-law. Custom Air. Let's go. Trust me on this one. Good, good people. I know everyone who works there. They are fantastic. So I will not let you down on this one. Trust me. You call Custom Air. They will do it right. OVE Podcast, Ohio versus everyone. The Torg, Scott Torgerson, QFM 96. Later this week, at some point, we will play the Ryan Day interview we did. Jerry Elliott and I did uh, with Ryan with Day. We just did eight minutes. Some good stuff on the quarterbacks. Good stuff on the format. Just kind of how the offseason was. Interesting conversation of what he had with Trevion Henderson before they brought Judkins in. So there's a nice little couple little nuggets there for you that we're going to play. We already played it on the air, but we'll replay it here on the podcast. We cover all Ohio sports, so remember to subscribe to the channel and like whatever streaming service. Just hit a little like there. Uh, Hit that little button. Let's get the algorithms going. And you subscribe and you get in our sports memorabilia giveaway on our new YouTube channel, Sam. Right on, man. Yeah. By the way, I want to reiterate: like, subscribe, and if you if you do need uh, any any of the services that are provided by our uh, sponsors, hit them up. They'll do a great job. Uh, NCAA came out. It looks like they're into or looking into potentially making changes to the transfer portal. Um, I guess the two the two takeaways that I saw in this, uh, I don't think it's going to fix the problem. However. Uh, the new law would not limit the number of times an athlete can transfer, but basically tie their eligibility to academic requirements. So basically, as it is right now, um, somebody can transfer, get into the portal and be eligible to play immediately upon getting to wherever they, they end up transferring to. They don't have to sit out a year. What they want to do is put some type of academic requirements to that immediate eligibility uh, instead of being able to bounce around and play immediately. They would at least want to make sure you're you're academically uh, uh, able uh, to, to immediately be eligible to play and participate wherever you end up going. Yeah, I don't I don't think this fixes any problems. I think this is them trying to put a Band-Aid on a bullet wound kind of thing. It's a weak attempt to try to do something with NCAA. 
Clearly, right. they have no power. Clearly, they're afraid to do anything substantial. So this is kind of one of those things where, uh, you know, let's try to let's try to do something to make it a little better because we know it's a issue going on with college sports. But Sam, I don't. It's it's not going to do. I, I read it today, and I said this is just really the dumbest thing ever. Like, why even do this? Yeah, I. It's 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 not going to work. It's not going to. I think all it is is basically they the NCAA knows via courts that they can't do, they can't enforce anything. So they're like, okay, well, let's try to bring this whole like academic amateurism thing back to see if we can make that stick. That's all they're trying to do. Yeah, and it's going to take some time. It it this is going to take some time. The university presidents are working on it. When we talked, uh, you know, about this super conference they're working on and some of the changes that they're working on, it's not going to happen overnight, and it's not going to be implemented next year. It's probably something we're looking like two years down the road. We're going to stick with this system where the constant lawsuits go on now for a probably an extended period of time, Sam, until they get this right. These things are going to, you know, we're seeing the dominoes put in place now, but when you've got a lot of moving parts, it's just going to take a time to get time to get the right system. And even when they get that system in, Sam, we don't even know if this kind of so-called super conference thing is going to be the right fix either. I just think it's kind of getting towards the solution that we need in, in college football. Yeah. I don't, and I don't know that it's going the the new uh, proposal or the new league or whatever you want to call it is going to fix the problem either. I think there's probably going to be some, a lot of questions that need to be asked, asked and answered prior to all I think is the, the one thing I do think it will fix is the hemorrhaging of the NIL issues, the transfer portal issues and, and all of the issues that the, the, the football is basically having with, the NCAA and their inability to provide any kind of guardrails or um, system to project them or to be able to plan for going forward. Yeah, exactly. And and that's and I think that's what you need to you need to you need to attack that first. You need to stop the bleeding before you can really fix anything. You know, one thing and is it next Tuesday the college football transfer portal opens? I don't know when it opens, but I know it's opening soon. Yeah, I think it's next Tuesday. I could be wrong there. Someone in the chat can help us out there. Uh, one thing to look for though. What's good for Ohio State is spring practice will be over, and then you can kind of identify weaknesses. And Dal- Dallin Hayden's leaving, right? You're going to have some spots in your roster. If the right side of that offensive line's not working, maybe you should go out and get someone on the right side of your offensive line. This is kind of the all right. Ohio State has had a spring practice to look at their strengths and weaknesses with this team. And if the right side of that offensive line is still a weakness, Sam, they should go out in the transfer portal and get themselves either a right guard or a right tackle. We're also assuming that a high state can't go out and get another running back. Yeah. I I don't know how appealing it would be to someone to come in and be a third string running back. If you're a starting running back for another team, maybe to get the, get a win, get some gold pants, get a natty maybe. Or, I mean, even if you're a younger guy, but you're a, you're an athlete and can be developed, like, well, I think they have, you, those you come in and, know, and know there's two guys in front of you, but you yeah. also know one of them's often hobbled and that next year you're the guy potentially. No, but, so, but, I, I mean, we have, we have guys too. We have incoming freshmen, right? No. Now. Yeah, exactly. I'm just saying everyone, everyone's down about this Dallin Hayden thing. And I'm, I'm thinking like, yeah, maybe it's not ideal, but there's a, there's an opportunity coming up to go out and get other guys. Like exactly what's going to happen with Dallin Hayden could be beneficial or happen uh, in our benefit too. So um, I want to hit this Caitlin think, Clark thing yeah, before we. I think it. Op- I, I would say this. I think it opens up a spot if it's James Peoples or whoever to, oh, for Ohio State to do a better job because I think they mismanaged Dallas Hayden to the point where all right, I'm good, and and he wants to see his time. But let's now with this running back position with the new coach not mismanage our running backs again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's. I think we're also kind of sweeping that under the rug a little bit. That maybe this guy screwed up might might be part of the reason why he was, you know, essentially forced to make a decision to leave. Yeah, go. Let's go, take that into account too. Go back um, to the podcast though, Sam, and and I I had several Buckeye alumni reach out to me and go, dude, you nailed it spot on. Tony Alford was half assing it. Ryan Day gave Tony, go out and find a new spot. It wasn't working out for either side, right? Tony did not have the pizzazz or the heart in it this year coaching. And Ryan Day knew it, gave him a one-year deal. It wasn't going, it, it wasn't happening. It wasn't working for both parties. Tony went to Michigan. Yeah, he gave a little F you to Ohio State. 
Has he mocked Ohio State on social media? Yeah, he's thrown some daggers at Ohio State. But don't think for a second that Tony Alford was this great cavalier of a coach that we, oh my God, we can't lose Tony Alford. I think we're going to do just fine with the new guy from Oregon where it's almost one of those addition by subtraction. So don't buy into the, oh, I think if anything, the Alford probably held us back last year at the running backs. And maybe that was the mismanagement. Yeah. I, I, who, the, the beauty of all of this is time will tell, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Caitlin Clark's, in my opinion, one of the Dallas best. Dallas Hayden instead of Dallin Hayden. I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear it this time, but if you did, that's my bad. I missed it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you see this, man, but I, I don't know how anybody doesn't consider Caitlin Clark to be one of the best women's basketball players ever to play the game. Yeah. Even though she never won a title. Um, you know, the, I, I saw this uh, the other night. They were doing like a simulcast where they had a bunch of UConn players on, uh, you know, more more or less bad mouthing her saying that, you know, she's never going to be one of the best if she doesn't win this title. Was to the point Diana where you can, she looks yeah. like a catcher's mid. Be quiet. Yeah, dude, you, ne- you don't want her coming to the party if you know what I'm saying. No, she's got a little definitely. bit of a. She got a little Bosa in her, if you if if you catch oh, my drift. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. S- uh, Samuel L. Jackson does, even went out, out in real time when was ripping the show, which I think is hilarious. Absolutely. Um, and then Di- Diana Tarazi out there firing shots at Clark, uh, shot shots at Clark, basically saying that there's women, they're grown ass women here in the WNBA that have been doing a while. You're not going to be able to do that here. So, you know, riddle me this though, Sam. Caitlin Clark is a college. Basketball player, correct. She's not a WNBA player. Right. You are jealous, Diana Taurasi, probably because you look like a catcher's mitt. Uh, but two, you cannot get 24 million people to watch you in a game. And you were at UConn. You, you are jealous as hell as this girl. This woman has made college basketball, women's college basketball re- relevant. I don't care if you think you're a greater player than her or not. Maybe you are. I don't know. I'm not an expert. But I know one thing. More eyeballs were on her than any other women's athlete, college basketball athlete of all time. You are jealous. Don't be like that. Don't be so petty. Shut your pie hole. And guess what? When you play her in the NBA, and I know you're a little older, and she's going to school you. I, I, I've i seen Diana Taurasi play in person. Um. She's going to school you. And when you try to guard her, she's going to beat you off the dribble. So zip it because she's probably taking notes. And listen, old lady, and I mean that in a nice way, she's going to school you. So you're on the down end of your career. So I would watch what you say. Can, can Is it just me or is everyone assuming that because Caitlin Clark, let me ask you a question and then I'll make my point. Did people watch women's college basketball this year? Did they because they were watching the sport, or did they watch Caitlin Clark? Caitlin Clark. Thank you. I, I think there's this giant assumption that women's basketball is on the rise and it's going to continue to rise. My question is going to be: if people are not watching for necessarily for Angel Reese or Juju or uh, Kim Mulkey, like these teams, or or you know the South Carolina that I think just went thirty six and zero. Yeah. But they're watching for Caitlin Clark. You ha- There's this giant assumption out there that the sport's going to continue to grow where I think you're going to see a ratings plummet next year. They're going to try to sell you the sport le- next year, and people are going to be like, is Caitlin, Caitlin Clark coming back? Nah, we're good. And, and that's why this 24 million, and I don't mean this in a negative way, and you watch the podcast, I have been so pro on the Caitlin Clark bandwagon, the OSU women's uh, team. We put guests on the morning show with Torg and Elliot. I'm all about supporting the Lady Buckeyes. Hell, I've had more interest in the Ladies Buckeyes than I did in the Men's Buckeyes and until like halfway through the season. But the problem is, Sam, is this is what college basketball should be, women's college basketball should be doing, is behind the scenes they should team up with like the best marketers in the world and said, okay, we just had 24 million people do it, watch it. More people were watching us than any, you know, pretty much any sport outside of the NFL and like top, like college football playoff games. So how do we capitalize on that next season with our star attraction gone? That's the thing. Cause they, they got us right. We're interested because of Caitlin Clark. And we all just said, well, we watched for Caitlin Clark. So now what do they do as a sport to attract you to watch again next year? Cause I thought the sport was pretty decent. Caitlin Clark was nailing buckets from downtown. The problem is, is who's the next Caitlin Clark. 
can they have a nether athlete to suck us in like they did with Caitlin Clark? And they need a PR machine, man. They need to do PR promos, social message intros all over TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, or X, Facebook, whatever it is, promoting the next big thing. You're absolutely and right. And I, I just have to shove it down our throats, just like they did Caitlin Clark. The problem is when they shoved it down our throats with Caitlin Clark, it was delicious tasting because we loved it. Yeah, I think they're gonna try they're gonna try and package something and shove it down your throat to continue the growth of the of the, the sport or the, the viewership. I just don't see it happen because I, I think the smart people in you know marketing or media know that it was Caitlin Clark, not the sport. And again, I'm not besmirching the sport. I'm just no, saying you're right, though. You're I'm, I'm being truth. honest. Yeah. I'm being objective here. Yeah. I, I think they know that. So what they're going to try to do is again market, position these players. Um, you know, they always talk about the NBA, how it's it's a it's a marketing sport, it's a player-driven sport. I think they're gonna try to continue to do that in, in women's college basketball going forward. But the one thing I am curious to see is if what Caitlin Clark does to WNBA viewership, because you know, I don't know anybody that's clamoring to watch that. Gotcha. So I, I'm curious. Gotcha. Quick break and what's on next? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it. It's Torque for Custom Air. I've been saying it for years. No one beats Custom Air service and knowledge. I know when I have anything going on with my heating and cooling, they are the go-to guys. In fact, they have taken care of every home of mine. Custom Air doesn't take shortcuts. They get the job done right the first time. It's great to do business with a company that's trustworthy and honest. That's just a few reasons why I go to Custom Air. Looking for a great company that you could trust? Call Custom Air. Custom solutions, custom comfort, custom air. Visit them on the web at customairco.com. All right, Sam, you ready for what's on X? Let's do it. I haven't, I'm flying blind on this one, so this should be interesting. Yeah, I am kind of as well. Let's start in hockey, where if people think that the Columbus Blue Jackets are going to move, folks, they are not. Cameron Cox, Channel 12 in Phoenix, shots fired Scottsdale Mayor. Ortega opposes the Coyotes' proposed new arena location in Scottsdale. Basically says, listen, we don't even have the water. We don't have the infrastructure. We don't want traffic. So as it stands today, the Fantasy Hockey Project must move west away from Scottsdale. That is a big ouch. When are they going to move the Coyotes? Let's just get rid of that team. That is, well, that's been an ongoing storyline. It needs to move us, move along. We're talking, and I, and I, I see when we talk about this, about how I demand new ownership for the Blue Jackets for anything to change. People always bring up, well, they're going to move. Not necessarily. Like, it could be as a part of the sale, whether it's done by the the current owner to the new owner or by the NHL as a whole, that you, as a, as a provision to the sale, this team cannot move. It's not that difficult. And again, I think, I think if they bring somebody in that's competent, we, I mean, shit, they're filling the arena. They've got sellouts and they've never been worse. Like this, this could potentially be a moneymaker for somebody. Yeah. Like the, the city's clamoring for it. It's just, we're not getting it. Uh, let's do a basketball note. NBA Central on X. When I talk to NBA teams, there's a clear consensus that as a defender, Bronny James is already at a ca- at the NBA caliber. Sam, Sam. Is, is, is that the narrative we're going to take with Bronny James to the NBA that he's already an NBA defender? Well, based upon the amount of defense wow. I've seen played in the NBA, you don't have to be that. You and I are probably elite. Yeah, <laughs> you're right but there. Isn't it funny, though, that you, you start seeing the, the media machine start spinning stuff up like this? Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, let's go with uh, Garrett Cole, Dan Clark, Dan Clark Sports. Speaking of the media earlier today, Garrett Cole was clearly frustrated that Major League Baseball appears to have publicly dismissed the, dismissed the possibility of the pitch clock being a contributing factor to increasing rates of UCL and other elbow industries. Do you still disagree with Garrett Cole? Uh, again, I, I think it's it's a much easier explanation than the clock, especially for a guy like Garrett Cole, who's a prime, a prime example of putting immense amount of pressure on your elbow because you throw really freaking hard. Yeah. Stefan Diggs story on X, NFL rumors on X. There was only one team that the Bills would not trade Stefan Diggs to when allowing him to seek a trade. That was the Chiefs. 
Did I black out? Uh, did we, I know we had it on the show sheet. Did we talk about them making him a free agent after after this year? Oh, no, that's what the the Texans are doing. They reworked his deal where they gave him three million dollars more this year, and they're allowing him to walk at the end of the season. And they traded a second round pick for him. That was very interesting by the Texans. I think the Texans realize that this is the best Stephon Diggs we're going to get if we make it his final year of the yeah, year. Don't, they don't want to pay him for three more years. Yeah, and, and I guess they feel that he's the type of guy where money motivates him and that he'll ball out in the last year of his deal. That tells yeah. me a lot, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, let's do a, another football one. Uh, this is Chargers country. Let's say Malik Neighbors never leaves. Uh, he's visiting the Chargers today. Let's never. Let's say he never leaves the building. Take a look at this offense because they did lose uh, their top two receivers, their top quarterback, and their top ten end, tight end. The Chargers did. So Herbert's your quarterback. Gus As Edwards is your running back. They just re-signed him. Hayden Hurst is your tight end. Malik Neighbors, wide receiver. Quit Johnson, second wide receiver. I believe he was their first round pick last year. And Joshua Palmer, uh, first round pick from last year. I mean, that's not too shabby, Sam, for offense if you're the Chargers. I mean, to lose that much and to be able to rebound with that type of, of talent. A lot of pressure on Justin Herbert now. Yeah, a lot of what ifs, but yeah. Uh, let's go. Sorry, I should have did this in baseball. How about Ailey, uh, Ellie De La Cruz? Home to home in 15 seconds for his inside the park home run. Man is fast. Like he is. I, I just wish he he put the ball in play and swing and miss less. Yes. Like he when he he made a I watched that game last night. He put the ball in play last night and because he's so fast, put a lot of pressure on. I think it was a third baseman or shortstop making the play. Puts a lot of pressure on him to make the play. Throws it up the right field line. Moves up. He ends up scoring on the next hit. Like he, he's phenomenal. He just the problem is he's got a little bit of the Billy Hamilton problem where he's so fast, but he doesn't hit the ball. Doesn't put the ball in play enough. He's so exciting as a player that we forget about his flaws. And no, yes, that's 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 a great that's a perfect way to put it. Yeah, he is so good or like flashy that we forget there is a lot of flaws in his game. Right. All right. Tomorrow, new. Did you job. hang on? Did you put my Did you put my Angel Hernandez no, stuff I in this? Didn't. I it's didn't. all right. Save I, it then. I got busy. We'll We'll do it tomorrow. By the way, right. we're hoping to have Finkus back the next two days. He will be back next what Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. I think. Uh, that's a good question. He He sent me the text. I don't. Remember. Yeah, we'll get we we'll get Finkus back next week. Promise. All right. Have a good. Uh, remember, menace to sports tomorrow at noon. Remember, subscribe to the new channel, YouTube.com at uh, forward slash at. Ohio versus everyone. Thanks, everyone. See you guys.